In this video, what I'm going to do is to show you how to set up a new Revman sheet and how to enter data to be able to undertake a meta-analysis and how to produce a forest plot. So when you first open Revman, the new review wizard will open. And what I usually do is just to click the finish button because I don't follow this wizard. And I'll show you the way I set up my sheet for meta-analysis. So if a new sheet open, you'll notice that there are different aspects of the window. So on the left hand side, you've got what is known as the tree view. And then on the right hand side, you've got the main output. This is where you'll view and enter all your data and you can view your forest plots, for example. Now the very first thing you need to do is you need to enter some references into the Revman file before you can actually input any data. So these references are going to be the studies that you're going to include in your meta-analysis. So to add new references, what you want to do is you find on the tree view on the left hand window where it says studies and references you want to click the little icon on the left hand side of this so then it'll open up the subcategory and with this now open you'll see references to studies and again you want to click the same icon next to this to open up these subcategories and now you'll see these where it's included studies excluded studies studies awaiting classification and ongoing studies now for the purpose of what I usually do, I usually just enter the included studies in the analysis. And to add the references to this, you simply click on the option where it says included studies, right click and then select add study. So the new study wizard should now open. So this is where you will enter all your studies one by one. So the study ID is generally the first author surname and then space and then it'll be the year of the publication and then click the next button. Leave the data source as published data only and click the next button. The year will then be detected automatically from the study ID, but if it isn't, you can change this from this window here and then click the next button. Leave the identifiers and click the next button. And then it's now asking you what you want to do after this wizard is closed. Now, what I recommend you doing at this point is go ahead and repeat in this process for all of your included studies in your analysis. So what you would now do is to select add another study in the same section and repeat this process and then click the continue button and it'll take you back to the start and now you have the study ID for your second study. Now once you've entered all of your included studies, you should find them all under the included studies tab in the tree view. As you can see in my example here, I've got quite a few studies included. So the next thing we want to do is to set up a new comparison. Now to do this, on the tree view on the left hand side, find where it says data and analyses and right click this and then select add comparison. So just give this comparison a name. In my example here, I've got concentrations of a protein in the blood from young and old participants. And basically I'm interested in the difference between concentration of these proteins in the blood between young and old. I'm just gonna name my, uh, my comparison young versus old. And then click the next button. The new comparison wizard is now asking what you want to do after the wizard is closed. Now, what you need to add under the comparison is an outcome. So what you want to do is select add an outcome under the new comparison and then click the continue button. So the new outcome wizard should now open and there are a few different options because Revman is asking you what type of data you have in your analysis. Now I'll go over briefly each one. So the dichotomous option is when you have numbers of participants with events and the total number of participants in two different groups, for example, a control and a treated group. If you are including studies that have looked at the effects of smoking on the number of individuals diagnosed with cancer in those that don't smoke and those that do smoke. So if you're doing that, you would select the dichotomous option. The continuous option is when you have variables of continuous data. So these are mean standard deviations and the total number of participants in two groups. So this is what I'm going to go with in my example, because I have continuous data in the form of concentrations of a protein in the blood between young and old individuals. The observed minus expected and its variance option is usually when you have data from survival analysis. So the generic inverse variance option is used when you have studies which have an effect estimate of your choice and it's standard error. So an example of this is when studies report odds ratios but they've reported that they've controlled for certain variables in that model. You would enter the controlled model into this generic inverse variance. And other data is simply where the results are entered as a text and you are presented with a table as opposed to a forest plot. So in this example, I'm going to do continuous data type, but the options after this follow suit for the other types as well. I'm going to select the next button. What you want to do now is give your output a name. So mine is I'm interested in the difference of a protein called interleukin-6, or this is called IL-6 for short. 
and I'm just going to say L6 concentrations. And then the group label is basically the two groups that are in your analysis. So my first one, the group one would be young, because there's young adults, and then my group two would be old for old adults. And then click the next button. Now this window will look slightly different depending on what type of data analysis you're choosing. And this is obviously the one for the continuous data type. There's only one type of statistical method that I can select for this, which is inverse variance. There are two types of analysis models generally in all meta-analysis, one being fixed effects and one being random effects. So if you're anticipating that there's going to be large effects between the studies included in your analysis, it's recommended to select the random effects option. The fixed effects option is usually when the studies are quite similar to one another. So I'm going to select the random effects option. For the effect measure, for the continuous type, there's only two options. There's the mean difference. So this is when all of the studies have measured the same thing using the same scale. You could select the mean difference. So if all of my studies had measured this protein using the same methods and reported the results in the same units, I could select this. The standardized mean difference is where the results are converted to a standardized measure and this is commonly referred to as Cohen's d values. Now this is when all of the studies have measured the same thing but using slightly different methods and slightly different scales. But this is the option I'm going to select because some of my studies use different methods to measure my output. I'm going to click the next button. This is where you can basically select different confidence intervals if you want to. But the most common one obviously is 95%. So I'm going to leave this as the default options and click the next button. And this next window basically is just providing a bit more information of what you want to do about the forest plot. On the forest plot itself, if the studies are to the left of the plot, you're saying that it's going to be favoring something. And then if it's to the right of the plot, you want it to favor something else. So in my example, I'm going to say if the studies are on the left, I'm going to say this is higher in the young. So the concentration of this protein is higher in the young. If the studies go to the right hand side of the plot, it's going to be higher in the old. Don't worry too much about these settings and if they're wrong at this stage because you can change them afterwards once you've got your forest plot up and running. The units of effect measure, you can input some units here if all of the studies reported the same units. So if it was picograms per milliliter, for example, you could enter that here. But because mine are standardized values, I'm going to leave this as blank. The scale is currently set to 100. So this is how zoomed in the forest plot is. But I recommend just leaving this at the minute because you can use the slider on the forest plot view to actually change the scale for you to see which is the best view. And then finally, you can sort by different variables if you want. So this is when you have the studies in your list of your forest plot. You can organize them by your study ID, the year of study, the weight, the effect size, the risk of bias item if you add any risk of bias in here, or you can define your own order. Now what I usually do is do the year of study, where I like to have the oldest studies at the top and then the newest studies at the bottom, and then click the next button. And then finally it's asking you what you want to do when you close this wizard. And then I'm just going to leave it as edit the new outcome and click the finish button. So you'll notice now that the new outcome has now been opened. So you'll find this under the data and analyses option. So what you have currently is an empty table. You'll also see this is the forest plot on the right hand side. Obviously we've got no studies included at the minute. So the next thing we need to do is now go ahead and add our studies of interest to this plot. Now to add studies to an outcome, there are a few ways you can do it. You can either go on the data view, you can see this button at the top here, it says add study data, you can click this. Or you can simply right click on the outcome in the tree view, and then click add study data. And then the wizard will ask you which studies do you want to include in the analysis. So these are all the studies that you added originally, and basically you want to select all of the studies that you're interested in. And if you want to select multiple ones, you would hold the control key down on your keyboard, and click and select different ones. And once you're happy, with the studies you want to include, you can click the finish button. So I've just gone ahead and included some studies in my outcome. What I've also done is gone ahead and included some data. So these are the mean values for this protein of interest and the standard deviation, as well as the number of participants in each group in the old and the young adults. And the white boxes are ones that you can actually edit and everything else will be automatically calculated for you. Now if I scroll across, you'll see that the weights have been calculated. So the higher the weight, the more of an influence it will have on the overall measure. The standardized mean difference here is my effects estimate for each individual study, which the RevMan has calculated for me. And at the very bottom, you'll see there is the overall effect estimate, which is the output of the meta-analysis. You also have on the bottom left hand side, the overall statistics for the output of the tests. And there is two main statistics. There's a heterogeneity statistic, 
with a p-value here and the i squared value. So this is a measure of study heterogeneity. In other words, are the studies that are included in the meta-analysis, are they quite similar or do they vary differently from one another? Generally, anything with an i squared value of over 50% is considered a model that has quite high heterogeneity. And this is the p-value which indicates this is significant. So in other words, these studies do vary quite differently from one another. So that's where you decide to do a subgroup analysis, for example, to see if you can identify the source of heterogeneity. And finally, the test for the overall effect is displayed here. So this is the p-value for the overall model. And the p-value here is highly significant. Now, if we go ahead and look at the forest plot on the right-hand window, you can see this is basically just a graphical representation of the effect measures calculated in Revman here. And if they're on the right-hand side, the concentrations are higher in the older adults. And if they're on the left-hand side, higher in the younger adults. And the slider at the bottom of the window, you can use to zoom in and out of your forest plot. So this is the scale bar. So you wanna pick a scale which is close enough that it includes all of your studies and the confidence intervals. So something about that for this one is perfect. So the overall effect is in the diamond at the bottom. And then these are the individual study effects here with the square being the effect estimate for that study and the whiskers being the 95% confidence intervals. The line at zero is just a representation of no effect. There's quite a few options at the top here that you can use to add more study data. You can change the model to a mean difference in this case, as opposed to standardized mean difference if you wanted to. You can change the model to a fixed effects model, as opposed to a random effects model. You can export your forest plot by clicking this button here. It'll open your forest plot up in a nicely presented window. And then in the bottom left, you can actually save this file as an image file. You can also view your funnel plot by clicking this button here, and you can save this also as a, an image file. The settings button, you can go ahead and change some of the variables that we set up in the previous windows. And then if you scroll on the left hand side to the data view, you'll see that all of these options are currently ticked, which means the studies are included in the analysis. If you untick them, it will take them out of the analysis. So this is useful for when you want to do sensitivity analysis, for example, where you could exclude one study at a time and see if the overall effect is remaining. So that is a quick run through of Revman on how to set up a new sheet and enter data for a meta-analysis. Mm -hmm.